Hello, welcome back to our discussion of operating system support and virtual memory. So we've seen how does the real physical memory work and one thing that we would like to take away from there is that, that every uh, location in that memory, every word or a block, has its own physical address. That is the address that corresponds to the library or congress call for the books or um, a street address um, that the postal service uses to deliver mail. Let's see how does this memory and addressing of the memory work when there are multiple processes that are trying to use it. So in the simplest case, when we are running so-called a bare metal system where there is no OS support, addresses issued by loads and stores that the program has are real physical addresses so you know this process that is running on a on a processor is going to be addressing real physical locations in the memory now if we have multiple processes then each of these processes can issue any address and can therefore address any part of the memory, uh, even those parts that um, it does not necessarily own, that you know, where another process believes um, uh, that, that where another process believes that it has ownership of. So that's kind of a problem because multiple processes can run over each other in the memory. Um, even more dangerously, um, some processes, when there is an operating system in this model, um, would be able to run over the operating system's data structures. In order to avoid that, we need to have a translation mechanism where uh, there would be each process would be using a virtual address space and then those addresses would be somehow decoupled in the physical address space. Um, so before accessing a particular physical location in the memory, we would check if a particular process has access rights to that particular spot. So when we look how things look uh, with the virtual memory, we are going to have hundreds of processes that are managed by the operating system. Um, each line here corresponds to a different process, and each process lives under this illusion that it got, at the time, a core to itself and the entire memory to itself. And the next line here is another process that also lives in, under the illusion that it got the process to itself and all of the memory, and the next one, and the next one. Hundreds of processes can be there, uh, and they're all multiplexed onto the core by the operating system. Um, each one of them runs for some time on the core and then through the mechanism of a context switch, another uh, process takes ownership of the core. But what are you going to do with the memory? There is only one memory and we cannot just save its contents <laughs> it's because we have all of the memory and you know, in a content switch run, um, you know, put the data from another process on it. So what we do, we run, we, we have to run this translation process. We have seen a conceptual picture of that. We are going to get into a more, more details of its operation now. So each process runs in its own world. Um, it sees this memory here, the entire memory from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to FFF, FFFF. FF, uh, where it can store the code, the static data, the heap, and the stack. But then, then in some way, those virtual addresses get translated to a physical addresses in a different way for every single process. That concept, that the translation is owned by something that is called the memory manager. Ma memory manager is the thing that maps virtual addresses to physical addresses. Conceptually, what it does, it essentially maps each of these processes to a part of a memory. So each of the processes, um, although it thinks it is running from the zero address to the 
top of the address actually gets to use only a part of the memory. These parts of the memory are not necessarily contiguous as drawn here. Um, in practice, they're all going to be more like interleaved. They're going to be all over the place and mixed with each other. Furthermore, conceptually, what does the memory manager need to do? First, it needs to provide the translation of virtual to physical address spaces. And then, very importantly, needs to provide a protection. So the memory needs to be isolated between the processes such that each of these processes gets its own private memory. A um, uh, consequence of that is that errors in one program, you know, coding errors uh, that can happen accidentally in one program, do not corrupt the memory of another program. And very importantly, prevents a user program from um, messing up with OS's memory and crashing the system. Also, since we have so many processes, we may run out of DRAM. But the memory manager is actually going to prevent that by expanding the memory system onto the disk. So it will provide this illusion that our DRAM is much bigger by swapping parts of the memory of, of DRAM contents onto the disk. Now, disk is a lot slower than our DRAM. So this should happen infrequently. And what we are going to see here, our DRAM is essentially going to be used as a cache, some sort of a cache for the slower disk. How does that all happen? We're going to see after a quick break.